Support WrestleTalk! Be friendly in the comments. RWWE wasting Bobby Lashley? I'm Ollie Davis, this is Luke Owen, welcome to Wrestle Ramble, and today we are reviewing this week's episode of Raw, where the most pertinent question, one of them, is... What are WWE doing with our good friend Bobby? The man who went on to dominate Impact Wrestling and TNA for a few years in his 10-year WWE interim. Now he just comes out, he doesn't feel special. He should feel special, right? Look at his impressive physique. Look at all 20 of his abs. Look at that body. He, Look at that yes. hot, hot Bobby Lashley body. Are you hot for Bobby Lashley? I'm hard for Bobby Lashley. As He's got hard, an impressive physique. He's Harder 40 than years you are old. for Rollins? Rollins is I'm hard for in a different way. Mm. He gets me excited in a more guttural way. Bobby's just like an an initial wow, and then it's uh, okay. You're not really doing anything with him. Of well, substance. yeah, but I think it's it's. I, I'm not sure whether we should be um, uh, doomsaying on the Bobby Lashley experiments we just yet. Asking but a we are merely we are, and we are not doomsaying. We are merely asking a question for anyone who thinks we are being negative, Nigels. Um, but I do think that we are in a really bizarre period of WWE at the moment where Raw doesn't really have many storylines going on at the moment. It's just been sort of like house show mania until Backlash is done and then we can maybe put him into a feud and see what's going on. But I do agree that he is considerably colder than when he first made his return. Because what has he done since his return other than suplex people? And, I mean, you could argue that's all Brock Lesnar does, but he's done a couple of stalling suplexes, and he dropped, um, who did he drop in the Rumble? Um, he dropped someone, like, right on their heads in the Rumble. Mm. I can't remember who it was now. They tried to do it's this. Big Cass. Thing. I thought it was Big Cass, yeah. but I didn't want to say it was Big Cass. But yeah, it was, so they dropped uh, Big Cass just right on his head in the Royal Rumble, and that's pretty much all he's done since coming back. Well, he has done something else, and this is where I'm kind of souring on their plans for him, and that is... Work as the person who gets heat for the Braun Strowman hot tag. Oh, so yeah. the, the 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 night after WrestleMania, that's where he makes his return, and he has a squash match. Well, it wasn't even a match, was no, he, it? He suplexed down. It was Elias. an angle on Elias where he just gave him that impressive delayed suplex, and we both said at the time, "Hey, Bobby Lashley looks great. That's a heck of a suplex. I can't wait to see what he do." Not the most impactful debut. Would have preferred him to debut in a more special way with maybe a storyline to sink his teeth into but no but fine 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 then the next week it was the uh the superstar shake-up which was a 10-man tag in the main event the following week it was in a tag match with Braun Strowman against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn where Bobby was worked over for the whole match until you got that excellent Braun Strowman hot tag and then here again another tag match this time a six man where Bobby and Roman got worked over the most of the time for the Braun hot tag again so it is like you said how show a mania this month which is just absolutely bewildering because you kind of think WrestleMania mainstream interest in wrestling has peaked you want to carry that momentum through, right? Not yeah, just cut its legs off. The problem is you had that five-hour house show that we had on Friday that we had to wear on the WWE Network that we sort of built towards and then sort of have done stuff afterwards, which has interfered with our backlash build. But what? Like, you, this isn't an argument, though, because SmackDown... No, I'm saying it is an argument. This, <laughs> SmackDown... I'm it's terrible. SmackDown is handling this perfectly and where, where you've got a mixture of storylines that can weave into greatest royal rumble and backlash and still building stuff beyond w while having an, an absolutely fascinating roster well yeah i mean compare what smackdown has done with jeffrey hardy winning the united states championship he's won the united states championship and instantly he's begun a feud with randy orton like on the day he debuted on smackdown in the superstar shakeup he started a feud with randy orton and then that has continue because they're now having a match at Backlash but in the interim he had a match with Jinder Mahal at Greatest Royal Rumble you compare that to the Intercontinental Championship title picture on Raw where Seth Rollins is not facing Finn Balor at the at, um, Backlash as you might assume having based on the last four weeks of, of Raw he's actually facing The Miz but they've done nothing to promote The Miz match he's just having that match yes it's uh but back to Bobby Lashley it's it, he is of all the raw things, I I worry he's the one who's getting the the worst hand because he needed an oomph, and it's like WWE see Bobby Lashley, the size of him, and think he's a former WWE star. 
we can just put him in there and he'll get reactions. But that actually hasn't happened. Not at all. Uh, it, it's like the crowd, that was a decade ago. And really, what did Bobby Lashley do? I know he had the big money match with Donald Trump and Amaga. Who's Donald Trump? Never heard he's, of him. He's that, that guy who's in charge of something big. Okay. Uh, I'll and, the apprentice. And uh, that, it, he never, it was, it was never on top for that long. It was like a, a year, two year run, Bobby Lashley. So for him to come back a decade later, the fan base has kind of turned over. All those people who were, not all of those people who were fans then, but some of them grew up, stopped watching wrestling. A, a few others might have stayed. They probably don't even know who Bobby is or why he's a big deal. Yes, that that is part of the problem. Is they kind of like relied on the fact that, as you say, hey, he was here a while ago. People will just remember that and they'll cheer for him. Also, look at the size of him. People will just cheer. It's that. It's the Vince mentality. Dave Meltzer mentioned on Wrestling Observer Radio that when business is down. Vince goes to the big guys. Like, that's his go-to thing. He's just like, oh, man, people aren't really interested in my product anymore. Let's just get a load of big guys, and we'll put them in big guy stuff, and then that'll get the crowd interested again. It's a human reaction. When WrestleTalk views are down, I go back to vacant. <laughs> L- a <laughs> lot of silhouette question mark thumbnails. Mm-hmm. Love those Love guys. Love that stuff. Uh, so, so Bobby Lashley on this particular show, again, he's. I'm trying to figure out what his placement on the card is because the show opened with Roman Reigns. We'll get into it in the in the full review, and then all the three heels, so <laughs> hometown boys, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, yeah, who were totally playing up to the crowd. God, they got such heel reactions they yeah. got this week. And Jinder Mahal, and they're all beating down Roman Reigns. And then who's the first guy to make the save? Bobby Lashley. He runs down. And like, I guess you can, and there was no, there was a reaction, but it was nothing really. And this was a, a lively crowd. Oh, wasn't it just? But this is a lively crowd that only wants <coughs> to cheer two people, really. No. Well, no. I mean, I, I'm they saying. They cheered. In, in Seth Rollins, they gave the big thing let me, to. Let me finish. Well, I just think you. <laughs> let me finish. Okay, Luke. They were really interested in cheering two people in this segment. They were interested in cheering for Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, and then Braun Strowman came out, and they were like, oh, yeah, also Braun is awesome. <coughs> but they're. Okay, cheering, yes. Um, but I would say, just reaction-wise, Jinder got a lot of booze. Roman got a lot of Ooh, booze. Didn't he just? Bobby Lashley of those six, it was just like, oh, hi, Bobby Lashley. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was a very muted reaction. Not one either way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that, to me, that's the worst thing. That's disinterest. Because there's nothing real. There's What is Bobby's character? He's Has Bobby- he had a promo? No, yeah. Um, no, but Str- promos was never his strong suit anyway. But, like, it's... Well, there's it, been nothing. There has been nothing. But I, again, as I say, like it's just Raw is in this sort of house show a mania era at the moment. And I think after Backlash, we should get a better because he he's not in a storyline. He's not. A, he hasn't got a character. He's not in a feud. He hasn't done anything apart from be Braun's tag team partner, which he's now done three weeks on the trot. So it's let, let's readdress this after Backlash when he. I mean. Heaven forbid, Raw might have some storylines, and then we can sort of like get a bit of a lay of the land and see what happens then. I just, if if you were to look at this and uh, how I would have done it, because we even had a, a show, what next for Bobby Lashley when the, I think the weekend after he returned, and it's like what well, we we talked about maybe putting him in a feud with Samoa Joe, but I think we both agreed squash matches. Yeah, let's do a squash match every week. That's not something that needs a big storyline. You can go through Greatest Royal Rumble and Backlash with these squash matches, and it makes him feel a bit special and reintroduces him. 100% a much better way of doing uh, that. But yeah. should we get on with the whole show? Haha, <laughs> it's a Raw review looking jacked, man! So the full episode of Raw kicked off with a Greatest Royal Rumble recap from the beautiful beautiful city of Jeddah. My, is it lovely. Now, uh, you and I did not do a video review for the Greatest Royal Rumble. Um, do you want to give a quick summary now? Okay, so I was watching it on Friday, fully expected there to be a title change. I was all prepped at home in my dressing gown and pyjamas to, which I got in about 5pm, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I think that's, that's 100% understandable. Yeah. As soon as I get home from work, I am basically into my PJs. Yeah. And uh, but I didn't. I only talked about this on the on the podcast. But at this point, I hadn't eaten for two and a half days. That's right. You I were won't un- go into it. I was doing a fast. Your forty eight hour fast. So I was grumpy. <laughs> you were. I was a grumpy man. So I thought. But you know, like some. I had to I, work with you. I enjoyed on the show, and I'm. I'm. Uh, I quite enjoyed the ladder match. It was just weird, and I. I. 
appreciated the reaction of Triple H and John Cena in that opening match. It was just bizarre, like such a big pop for a shoulder tackle as, or whatever as, it was. As I put in my, uh, I, I only saw the start of the Cena Triple H match live because I was on my way. I was traveling, as we talked about on the podcast previously. Um, but I was just like, oh man, John Cena came out to a massive babyface reaction and no one was singing John Cena sucks with his entrance music. This might be the first pay-per-view to take place not in Bizarro World. Yeah, this is this is what Vince wants the world. <laughs> this is what he wanted in 2006. And, uh, and, and I'm like, okay, I'm watching the Lesnar-Reigns match, which I didn't hate, I must say. I've seen a lot of people be down on it, but I, I was kind of liking the big move, big move because I, I was building up to the, the title change uh, because I was ready to to record the reaction video, put that up. That would be my thing. And uh, Roman speared Brock through the cage. I'm like, oh my god! And I thought Roman's feet hit the ground first, and and then he rolled over, and his whole body I was like, oh my god, we got new champions. And then they started saying on commentary, no, 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 Brock's Brock's won. It's okay. And I just, I honestly shouted out in my grumpy state, hungry state. F this, slam the laptop shut, and just didn't do anything. <laughs> so maybe a little bit unprofessional, but uh, I didn't want to do anything. <laughs> which is which is fair enough. Um, <coughs> I still haven't watched the whole show. I did watch the Rumble, though, and the Rumble was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was fun. That, uh, and to be honest, like, a lot of people said, like, why haven't you done a review? And I was like, there's very little to say about the yeah. show. It's, actually, there's remarkably very little to say about the show. It's, it is, it's just a broadcast New York uh, Madison Square Garden house show thing. Yeah, we well, never actually, I thought, I thought of a really, really good comparison to what it is. Because a lot of people were having a pop at uh, you and I uh, for calling it a house show. Because they're like, it's not a house show. Look at this stage. Uh, Pachiti, like, even put up saying, like, I've never seen a house show that looks like this. And, you know, Pachiti's not wrong when he says things like that. But a lot of people down on the idea that this was, quote, a house show. It's, I, I suddenly realized this while I was in Hastings away from the weekend. It's not a house show. It's the UK only pay per views they used to do, like Insurrection and mm. Rebellion. Shows that didn't really have storylines going in, but were a bunch of matches and nothing ever happened on them. There was um, uh, one show when uh, someone in the crowd had a sign that says, I would, I'd would i put money that nothing consequential happens on this show. That's a long sentence for a sign. Wasn't it just? And and that's that's what it felt like, really. It's just like, yeah, this is just a pay-per-view. And like, a pay-per-view just for this audience. Because there's nothing nothing will change coming out of uh, out of this show. And the landscape will be exactly as it was. Only now, Braun has got a lime green belt that we'll never see again. And a giant trophy, which we did see. It is big. And the, actually, the, there was one impactful thing. I don't know if you saw it happen. Oh, uh, yeah. It What's was that? where Titus fell oh, over. Yeah, no. They played it down a lot. Oh, do you know what? I've, I've heard of a couple of people yeah, yeah, say yeah. something about it. WWE in particular have been <coughs> very quiet about the yeah. whole thing. They've really tried to sweep that under the rug. I mean, I bet they were counting their lucky stars. All the controversy, the women's and homosexual rights stuff. But Titus fell over. That's the thing we put in the replays. <laughs> so funny. So Gorilla Position did their like their podcast review of it, and uh, one of the guys, Matt Davis, was on there talking about like you know his his sort of political opinions, sort of like on this show, and it got really sad. And then James Dealer, the presenter, goes, "Still, Titus falling over was funny, wasn't it?" And it's great. When I was travelling to Hastings, going for my lovely little weekend away with my wife, I suddenly heard this great disturbance, and I was like. Oh, what, what was that? I just felt like the, the earth sort of shook a little bit. And when I watched the rumble back, I was like, oh, it was the sound of Vince McMahon cackling when Titus O'Neil fell over. Like, I can almost imagine how hard Vince was laughing at that. All those replays, that was not Michael Cole. That was not Kevin Dunn. That was, that was Vince McMahon going like, show me again. Show me him fall over again. And I feel like it's destined to be part of his gimmick forevermore. But yes, there was a uh, there was a greatest Royal Rumble recap. My main takeaway from just the video package was pyro. I <laughs> love pyro. I'm a simple man who likes explosions. Yep. I mean, you don't know what you've got until it's taken away from yeah. you. So the actual show kicked off with uh, the Roman Reigns promo, as we've already said. Reigns comes out. His there hasn't been such a thunderous negative reaction like this for a while, I feel. Yeah. Since probably going back to last year's 
roar after me. I'd almost imagine WWE were like, Phew, thank God he got a reaction. Yeah, because the, the Canadian Montreal crowd were very against Roman. No plants this week. No, no. Uh, maybe they were, they were all our plants. <laughs> we, we paid out, we bought out the entire yeah. arena. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to get into that discussion again, but I just want to say that I was basically right there, wasn't I? For that one guy. For that one guy. For that one guy. We do not know about the other 19. Uh, but yes, Roman comes out and he just... He moans again. Oh, he's... Do you know what? I mean, I, I know I say that the Greatest Royal Rumble hasn't impacted everything, but I, it's killed him. That loss at WrestleMania, that loss at WrestleMania, which they did just to swerve fans, they did it for no other reason but to swerve fans, has killed any momentum that Roman had, which, I hasten to add, was not a lot. But it's he's just completely flattened out now. And he came out... Pissed and moaned about the fact that he should be Universal Champion because they're really putting over this idea that like, his feet did touch first, the floor first. Chad Patton has admitted that it was a mistake and he should have caught, but these mistakes happen in WWE and the commentators are going like, oh, mistakes happen in this company sometimes, but he is the rightful champion. He's just standing there pissing and moaning. I'm like, I don't care, mate. And then he was like, I will be Universal Champion. And I'm like, I don't care. Mm. And I really don't think you will. I don't think he, he can't at this point. It's, it's way beyond it now. It's, it's weird because this is a heel way of approaching this situation. A badass babyface would just be like, I don't care. I'm just going to start beating people up I'll until just, I get some answers. I'll just beat him again. Yeah, but this is this is like Christian back in the Randy Orton feud where he keeps on using all these legal loopholes to try and get his rematches. Yeah. It's, do you know what it is? It's Big Show at the Rumble 2000 when Big Show, he did win the match. His Rock's feet touched the floor first and Big Show touched second. Big Show legitimately won that match, but Rock was the recognised winner. But Big Show was cutting heel promos, being like, guys, look, I've proven that I was right. You don't have to boo me now. But mm. everyone was booing because he was crying and whinging about it. And it's it's really funny. The other thing I read, I thought about this was that they kept saying, like, oh, the referee's decision is final. The referee made a mistake. And I suddenly thought back to that tag team championship title change they did with American Beta when they won the tag straps on SmackDown. And it was a scurry finish, and the refer- another referee came down and was like, you made a mistake there, lad. And he was like, ah, oh, you know what, I was right. Let's restart this sucker. And I said at the time, that will come back to bite people on the ass. Well, it's there's no consistency. This no. is just their, their rule structure this week. It's infuriating. It is infuriating. Uh, and but, it makes me care even less. But then Samoa Joe appeared on screen to a huge baby face pop. Well, like, we are in Bizarro Land, yes. because they were booing Roman Reigns. It's not the kind of reaction you're usually hearing. For Everyone Romans. else got the right reaction. I think you know that. I guess the heels were cheered, but all the other baby faces were cheered. <laughs> yeah, they were. They? Yeah, when Bobby, Bobby Lashley maybe not. When Seth Rollins came out to his huge ovation, God, it was really bizarre. Oh, well, oh, oh. they, they, a broken clock is right <laughs> twice a day, you know. Uh, so, so Samoa Joe says, "Look, you, you." Failed again. Like, yeah, 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 have, yeah, yeah, you have, mate. But then Jinder Mahal came out, Canadian hero Jinder Mahal, <laughs> uh, and he got he got a few boos. But oh my god, I was not prepared for what happened next. Sammy Zayn comes out. The crowd exploded. They lose their collective minds. It was insanity. It was awesome. And I just thought, I was like, this is the sort of reaction Sammy should have been getting every single week. So if they'd I, have done it right. I, I, I was watching him and it was like, this is... Right now, you're a babyface. You're moving around like a heel. But you know what? That heel physicality could be a could be a babyface. And I thought, maybe this is where Sammy is in two to three years. He's done the babyface stuff, and he was solid and resolute. And I'm a babyface, but I don't really, you know, like, there's not really a fun side to me. I'm just going to fight and win and do the right thing. And now, he's a heel. And he's the, the complete other way. I'm going to cheat and do everything, and I'm going to be all obnoxious. Waddy, waddy, waddy. And I, I do make a lot of jokes, a lot more jokes. Maybe, like... You, you've got it because they always tell this in the structure of movies. You have to you start out where you are, and then you go into the woods, mm-hmm. and you you sort of embrace the the badness of the woods. But then you use that badness and what you had in the first place to combine for the synergy, or whatever, to, to to become a new, better person, better than both those first two parts in the final act. And that's where you overcome the big bad. So like a Sammy that can make. Funny jokes, but in a baby face way overall. Like that's that's where I see if and 
right here that was a proof of concept for mm-hmm. me i know it's in canada i was gonna say it, it, it's really it's one crowd because and it's you know they, they even said in commentary we're about 15 miles from his front door mm. like this is and and the same with um kevin owens you know he came out also to a ginormous yes. baby face welcome home reaction and they were cutting promos in french and the crowd were just lapping up everything that they did and you are right like it you know you turn i always argue you turn people heel because you want to turn them baby face again when when we did our Bailey heel turn fantasy book in warfare. Both of us were just like, you want to turn a heel because you want to get her back into a babyface position so people can cheer her again. And with Sammy in particular, because he's such a great babyface, you've only got to look at the stuff he's done in NXT, whereas he is awesome as a babyface. That this is maybe this is the journey to do it. But I'm not sure. Like you saying this as a proof of concept is possibly incorrect because of this one town like he's not going to get this reaction next week. Well, I do, yeah, yeah, totally. But his character and the way he can. He can make jokes and it receive a babyface reaction, yeah. and I don't hate him. Like I'm not. Oh, you're just being an obnoxious heel. Kevin done it. Kevin Owens has done it ever since he debuted on the main roster. He has always been yeah. a heel that people cheer. I I th- I, th- I really do think Sami Zayn could be more than just that. Not a d- two dimensional babyface makes it sound like I was being down on his previous babyface character. I'm including the NXT stuff, but I think you can add a comedy rock joke level mm-hmm. layer to, to yeah. it. To oh, yeah, I was going to say, if he goes back to Babyface, I don't want to see him go back to the, I'm fighting for what's yeah. right, Babyface, because we got that with Daniel Bryan. We don't need it with Sammy as as well. And so Sammy said that he couldn't go to the Greatest Royal Rumble because of Bobby Lashley. Mm. Did Bobby make him Syrian? Uh, yes, uh, punched him so hard. Oh, he, he turned Syrian. Oh, man. Uh, well, no, he said it was vertigo. Yes, he said he got vertigo, sadly. Um, and when and Kevin Owens came out and he got this massive pop and he did this promo in French and the crowd started chanting, we, 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 and he just turned to Roman Reigns and was like, that means yes. <laughs> really Very liked. funny. Uh, there was, I read a translation of what he was saying. Oh, yeah? And it was along the lines of, uh, I'm pretty excited to be here. I'm not going to say this word, but I'll say darn. And apparently darn and this word are very close. And the, the word he didn't say is like the F word oh. in can- Canadian. Wow. So it was, it was a funny yeah. uh, way. And that's why it got such a big pop. But I, when they were all coming out, and this is, again, some some fuel for the house show fire. Why are they all just coming out and challenging Roman? Roman isn't because the Roman's number one. Because Roman's the top guy, man. He's he, not the number he's one the contender anymore. He's the top guy anymore. in the company. He's, he's not the, the title he's holder. He's the rightful universal champion, Ollie Davis. Of course people want to come out and challenge Roman Reigns. He's the guy around here. He's the top dog. He's the big dog. That's why. Mm. Well... Yeah, and he. <laughs> it's, there's no story. There's no context. There's no story. It's just people, and especially gender. Like, okay, <laughs> Owens and Sammy. That, but then no, they weren't even remotely involved with Roman before this. It was just such a lazy way to set up a six-man tag. Even lazier because you know the the heels start beating up Roman, and then Bobby runs out. Nobody cares. And he like, well, I guess Bobby was had a match he had one match that he won last week where there was no cheating involved against Sammy and Kevin so I guess he's really petty (laughs) and he wants to come out and and hurt them some well, More. the thing is, when you're doing house show loops, you don't want to do the same matches every night. So you've got to try and shake it up a little bit. And they just decided that, hey, we did the tag match last time. Let's make it a six man this time. But it's basically still the same match. But then most egregious, egregiously, egregiously, was, egregiously was Braun Strowman coming out, who mm. I love and got a huge reaction. Love those hands. But when were Braun and Roman friends? Oh well, yeah, I did get a tweet from somebody saying like, "I guess Roman really for, like forgave him for all, or forgave him for all of that ambulance stuff that they did last year." And br- the other way, and the other Roman way around as well. Literally tried to murder. He Braun. tried to murderize him on TV, no less. So, uh, yeah, I, I just, it's fun, <laughs> but there is nothing. No, absolutely there is nothing, nothing. There. there is nout going on at the moment. It's this is the way I enjoy fireworks. <laughs> wow, it's like and pyro. That's it. It's pyro. Yeah, it's. But I don't, know. I don't know. But Braun did throw Sunil Singh over the top rope onto Jinder, which yeah. was which was always fun. And the six man tag was made for later that night. Funny Elias. Enough, it, it's amazingly, here in my notes, I've written the baby faces get tossed around, and then Braun tosses Sunil Singh. 
I was meant to say all the heels got tossed around, but I was so confused by baby by Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens getting those huge and because they were being booed. Like the babies were being booed as they were beating up Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. I just instantly wrote down baby faces. It's bizarro. Well, it's bizarro. Oh, it's bizarro. Sorry. Yeah. I like bizarro notes. It is just from a psychology standpoint. Braun's your top baby face. Like really, Roman's the really. top baby face. And, the, and Roman is Roman's the guy you want to be your top baby <laughs> face. Yep. Why would you put both of those out there with two guys you know who are going to get enormous reactions with Owens and Zayn? I have zero idea. Like, you knew this was going to happen. Like, you mm. must have known this was going to happen. You couldn't have said, like, man, these guys are from 15 minutes down the road. Do you know what we should do? Make them their heels tonight and put them against Roman and Braun. Like, why would you do that? It makes absolutely no sense. And I, last thing I want to think about on the Bizarro World um, comment... I know last week you got really fired up about the plants and you said, like, so that's really sad. Bizarro World to me is so much sadder than plants. Like, I yeah. think that, that is, of all the petty WWE things that they do, that's the one that I think is the real saddest one. It's the one that makes me genuinely sad. It's up there. It's up there. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's many. Uh, so, yes, Elias is shown next. Uh, backstage drinking some tea because he's got a bad throat for singing. And as soon as I saw that teacup, because we are currently re-watching WrestleMania X7, mm -hmm. I thought, well, that's getting urinated. In. <laughs> Someone has pissed in that, mate. Someone is... This is going to become a thing. Elias is going to be drinking his tea and then Bobby Roode or someone is going to defecate in his sandwich. I don't... Or, or <laughs> take not, it take not, it. He's not extreme. X-Pac. Yeah. Poor old Mark uh, Henry. So... Yeah, but then Elias comes out, has a great performance. Of course, he's super over anyway. Bizarro world. Going to be even more over in Montreal. The, there was a bit where he said, you know, what does WWE stand for? And the crowd go, walk with Elias. I swear, he just goes, wow. Like, <laughs> under his breath. Like, it must be really hard to be so, uh, pretend to be a douchebag. Yeah. But actually be quite thrilled. Everything's going so well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then uh, so he was singing the song, and then uh, Bobby Roode uh, made uh, his entrance, and they had a match, which was, I mean, it was Chinlock City. It was uh, just a lot of rest holds, and then Roode made a comeback, and then um, Elias rammed him into the ring post, and Roode fell to the outside. Maybe it's a thing against Bobby's, because Bobby Roode is Canadian. He certainly is. He has some awesome entrance music. He certainly does. He got less of a reaction than Bobby Lashley, really. Well, it's funny as well because Natalia didn't get the big Canadian reaction either. She like Ronda Rousey was more over than Natalia was in her match, and Ronda Rousey wasn't in the match. I thought Natalia got a big pop when she <laughs> came. When she came, I was like, oh yeah, of course, because it's Canada. Yeah. And then I saw Ronda Rousey next to her. Like, oh, yeah, because more like <laughs> more like. like it's oh, there's a Ronda Rousey chart now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was definitely <laughs> Rousey. Rousey. Uh, by the way, this is a go home show. Yeah, we I, actually have, we're twenty seven minutes in. Yeah, backlash is this backlash Sunday. Backlash is on Sunday. Yeah. So uh, can you just can you? Here's a fun game. Can you name me any matches that are happening? Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley versus Sami Zayn and Kevin. Is Owens. that really happening? Yeah, I mean I can no, name quite not. a few. That's, if, is if that actually happening on Backlash? Yeah, they they announced it. Did on the they show. really? Yeah. Oh, I missed that. Which is why it's uh, even bizarre that Owens would take the pin. In the, in the six man here I genuinely And I'm not messing it I genuinely didn't know That was mm. a match I thought you were Taking the piss then I thought you no. were just Naming blokes No I mean I'm excited I was actually, About all the Smackdown matches I was about to say Bobby's not even on the card For Backlash Well it was, it was a late edition I suppose uh, But yeah the uh, Backlash is a thing mm -hmm. mm. Uh, The But yeah so But Bobby is thrown, he's kind of been worked over his neck throughout the match, and then he's thrown into the ring post, and then the EMTs come down and they kind of call off the match. So really it's a no contest, but Elias declares himself the winner and walks off. One of the medics uh, says that Bobby might have crushed his larynx. Damn larynx. Yeah, and then I, I did like, when Elias was walking past the medics, he went, oh, was he hurt? And then carried on walking. What a dick. Great. That is it. the second clean victory Elias has over Bobby Lash Bobby Rude in would two you, weeks. Would you call that a clean victory? Well yes. Because well, so I suppose Rude did lose. There was no cheating. Well, it was a no contest. The, yeah. the referee kind of called it off. But to me, that is a super clean victory and then a like there was no cheating in the match. Mm-hmm. 
So I, I yeah, I'm just going to say it's two back to back clean victories. Do you know how I like to get baby faces over. Yeah. I like to take them across from one brand to the other and then have them lose week to week. Just it really gets them over. To, to, and I love Elias to a mid card guy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they're doing. Authors of pain, however, we know where we are with them. Certainly they're do. squashing jobbers. <laughs> they're, they're in Bobby Lashley's role. Jean Paul and <laughs> Francois. <laughs> so great. Very these, Canadian. These two <clears throat> were great. Yeah, they they had a little pre match promo. I've written here they're two perfect local competitors. Yeah, yeah, they did very well, uh, and they got. I mean, it was very quick. Uh, Super Collider and Last Chapter. Is that what it's called? The end. Yeah, the Last it? Chapter. Yeah. Yeah, and then AO. But then. AOP cut a promo. Well, and this is why they had Paul Ellering as their manager for, for so long. Uh, Corey Graves said at, um, at least they, they, these two local um, jamokes, as he likes to call them, won't have to go far to get back to their mum's house to get better. Yeah. And then put over the idea that they get free health care. It seemed like a bit of a dig. Uh, the, but back to the promo. <laughs> mm, yeah. They, after they cut a promo saying that the Book of Pain is staying open. And as my notes say here... They say something like sentence of destruction, but I'm not sure. It's because they were, I mean, they showed fire and they were shouting very well. Like, <laughs> shouting was good. But they were moving around their head from the microphone. So a lot of the, a lot of it wasn't picked up and it, it went quiet. Which is fine. Like, that's cool. That's like a cool manic way to deliver a promo. If you're delivering that kind of manic promo, don't make it so obviously scripted with just the... Oh, I just hate the way WWE writes language. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, yeah, that's why they had Paul Ellering. Why take him away from it? Yeah. Then we had another Saudi Arabian travel advert. Travel advert. <laughs> and Michael Cole again said, the progressive Saudi Arabia... Mm. Oh yes, progressive. They've had um, forty-eight um, uh, beheadings this year, I believe. It's like progressive relative to two years ago. D well, no, like I'm sure it's getting better, and like women can drive, but that's only a recent thing. Yeah. So I guess you can you can make the argument it is more progressive <laughs> than it was than it was two years I ago. I see. I see your point you're making yes. there. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm with you on that like, one. Like it's not completely inaccurate to say it's progressing yeah <laughs> yes i mean you and i got a bit of heat for calling this um this show propaganda um when we were doing our preview for it and when we were kind of talking about the build-up to uh the, the build-up big air quotes for uh for greatest royal rumble a lot of people said like i think it's unfair to call it propaganda i mean john cena's promo at that show was one sentence away from like i would come here as a holiday and i recommend you do too and then all of these videos as well and this is it's quite literal propaganda John Cena is a very good actor. <laughs> His heart was not in that promo. <laughs> it really wasn't. <laughs> he, oh man, there was no, there was no, nothing behind those eyes. Yeah. There like, was nothing there. Like to see his like make make a wish advert stuff, stuff he genuinely cares about. Yeah, he's putting these all into that. Man, like he's bumping around <laughs> in those adverts. Not in the Greatest Royal Rumble oh, promo. Oh, dearie me. It was something else. So next up, we had Seth Rollins, a uh, baby face, getting a baby face reaction. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, I, as I've written in my caps lock here, he's your guy. Mm. Like, this, the Roman thing is, isn't working. Do you know what is working? Seth freaking Rollins. Monday Night Rollins is working. He's your guy. Yeah. Uh, and that they first started chanting Ole. I think that's what I say. Um, maybe it's a Canadian thing. A. 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 They say A, don't they? A lot. Oh, Canadians, yes, A. Canadians, yes. Uh, so for a second, then, then I thought you went like into Liverpool. A, 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 A. A little bit of that. Yeah. Uh, and then they transitioned into you deserve it for his Intercontinental title win. Seth Rollins soaked this up for a while. Didn't he just? I mean, the, nice. the crowd were going effing ballistic. And then he said, merci beaucoup. Yeah, it was lovely. And that got a massive reaction. Huge well. And because it worked so well, but again, because it, it felt off the cuff, it felt like it was just a genuine thing. And he just, he prefaced it, it was like, I'm not very good at this. Merci beaucoup. Mm. As, I thought it was a really nice, like, human touch yeah. to not just saying, like, oh, I, I've been scripted to say this line. I'm just like, mate, my French isn't very good, but I'm going to try and say this. Merci beaucoup. I thought it was wonderful. Seth is a very, very good promo, but sometimes it feels, because it because he was scripted in his heel run for so long, like the second coming of Triple H's Reign of Terror, I yeah. felt. Yeah, he was. That those 20-minute promos just makes me... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm Seth Rollins, basically, <laughs> for, for 20 minutes every single week. Uh, with, like, I, I sometimes think, oh, he's a bit of a boring promo, because I think of that. But actually, he's a very it's good a promo. promo. Uh, and he was doing very well with the, I, I imagine, the material he was given. Bala interrupts, however, 
with his LGBT club. His lads, lads wear it again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I probably because he was getting some online criticism for for not wearing it at certain events. And this was my one of my favourite lines of the night. <laughs> did you do you know what I'm going to say? No. So Seth Rollins. So Finn Balor comes out and says, "I want to challenge you because." Yeah, Seth said, I'm going to be a fighting champion, unlike Brock Lesnar. And everyone's like, boo, Brock Lesnar. Finn comes out, I want to fight you for the title then. And Seth Rollins goes, oh, but I've got a match against the Miz at Backlash this Sunday. But, and Finn Balor looks at him and goes, I like the sound of, I like that but. (laughs) I like that but. I did not hear that. And I just... (laughs) Uh, I can't. Uh, <laughs> that was such a beavers and butthead <laughs> moment in my head. He said, <laughs> "He said, but." Uh, Seth asked the crowd if this is a good idea. We, oui. they, they responded. They, they thought it was a great idea. And then the Miz's music hits, and I think the Miz has turned up as well with Samoa Joe earlier. Okay, we're getting an actual backlash, but it's the Miz Taraji. Yeah. Okay, uh, but they, they came out and they cut a kind of funny promo. They want a new Four Horsemen faction. Yeah, so they came out saying, we made a mistake last week in asking you individually to be a new team when we should be a team together. And they revealed they've got a new T-shirt, <laughs> which is just white T-shirts with their faces, like, sellotaped to it. It was it was like a serial killer had made a T-shirt. <laughs> it was really funny. But then they were like, they went, one, two, three, four, Four Horsemen. And then, for, for what felt like 10 minutes, going, huh? 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 <laughs> And I every time they did it, I laughed. It was I, funny. It was really funny. I hope they've got something for Curtis and Bo. Yeah, they have. They're the Misturage. Yeah, something else. Uh, <laughs> and and then this sort of breaks into a scuffle after Rollins and Finn turn them down. And at the end of it, after Seth throws out Curtis or Bo or someone, the last one, he walks back into a Finn. What do you call that move? It's Wait, like a sling blade without the yeah, jumping. Yeah, it, it, well, uh, Big Show used to call it the final cut. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Finn does that, and you're like, "Oh, that was a bit heelish, a bit heelish yeah. from Finn." And Finn walks off, and then, like, that was that was great. I really liked it because it's kind of like it feels like a heel turn, but it's not a heel turn. But it could set up something later on. This is really intriguing. And then Finn's walking up the ramp, and they cut back to Seth, who's like. Oh, you got me there. <laughs> what pants? Pants, mate. What such pants. It's the exact same stupid <laughs> bloody look that he had to Roman Reigns when Roman threw him out the Royal Rumble oh, match. Such oh, such pants, though. Oh, mate. Rumble Good bands. one, mate. Rumble banter. I hate it. Why the don't cr- <laughs> more people hate each other in W? Everyone should hate each other, but because we're all baby faces, hey, I'm Ronda, <laughs> you're Naya. Big hugs. Wait. Hey, we're all friends. And then if that person does something that's probably like, you know, why didn't uh, Bailey react this way to Sasha when she eliminated her from uh, the elimination chamber? Ah, oh, banter, mate, though, isn't it? What banter? It is infuriating, and it, it is tough, and I know we've brought it up already, but we are re-watching WrestleMania X7, <laughs> where nobody likes anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody hates everybody, and it's awesome. Oh no, Edge and Christian like Kurt Angle. But they're heels. <laughs> That's what heels do. They're like just all. Oh, it's fine for heels to like each yeah. other because that's funny. But baby faces should all be vying to be the best. Ugh, I hate it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> next up we had Sasha Banks versus Ruby Riot, which was. A very fun match. It was actually, yeah, really fun. I, I really enjoyed this. This caught me by surprise. <laughs> I phased, I phased out for five by minutes. Surprise too. It could have been a really boring first five minutes. I wouldn't know. No, I was because it just washed I, over. I me. wasn't overly invested, but it turned into a really good match. I was like, oh, that actually genuinely surprised me. I like, and they keep saying, oh, the Ruby, like the Riot Squad, run rough shot over SmackDown. I'm like, stop lying. They didn't. I what? I review SmackDown live. I know they didn't run a, a, across SmackDown, but like. It almost felt like it was a clean slate for them here. And uh, Ruby getting a... She got the win over Sasha Banks. And I was like, ah, oh, this feels like a, a good start. This is a good starting point for, for Ruby Riot and the Riot squad. And I was quite happy about that. But uh, well, you want to make your point? Well, what were you going to say? I think I was, we might I, come to the I was going to transition thing. it into uh, the Sasha and, ba- uh, Sasha and Bailey stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Banks earlier, before the, like directly before the match, cut a promo backstage, said that... Uh, that <laughs> Yeah, the riot squad are, are just dominating Raw. We've got to stop them. Uh, but Bailey isn't here. I'm just going to do it myself. So I think this is going to build to a riot squad versus Bailey and Banks match, and they'll just extend this feud out forever. 
Did they really say? Did she really say that the riot squad have run across? It was along did, those lines. It was along those lines. But yeah, she did say that, like, because uh, Charlie Caruso, uh, I believe, yes. um, was saying, like, she was asking, oh, you know, the riot squad are out there. Is Bailey going to be in your corner? And my first thought was, what a stupid question, Charlie Caruso. Of course she's not. They're not friends. Mm. Like, we keep pretending that they are, but they, I've seen that they're not. They've attacked each other. They're not friends. And then uh, Banks said, like, I tried to call and text Bailey, but she's not answered. I'm like, I'm not surprised you're not friends. Uh, but yes, yeah, so, and then Sasha, <laughs> I've got, I wrote this down word for word. Sasha says, Raw runs on boss time. And if Ruby wants a riot, she can bank on it. Because that's how people talk. Mm. Hmm. Uh, it's, 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 it is like someone's written that for a website for a children's website. There's a sign in the crowd that says "We allow women," which really <laughs> made me laugh. <laughs> Very good. Canada's great. Canada is great. <laughs> nice one, Canada. I can't wait to go there in <clears throat> in August. Yeah, uh, they've. Uh, well, where am I? I've lost my place actually. So yeah, that was that was a ten minute match overall, hmm. and, yeah. and a very good last three. It went minutes, so I much think. longer than I was expecting mm. it to go, and I, and I really enjoyed it. And there was a lot of interference from the Riot Squad, so Banks couldn't o- overcome the the numbers game, and um, and Riot won with like a, a a Riot kick while Sasha was on the top rope, which yeah. I thought looked really cool. Yeah, and Sasha's kind of babyface comeback where she took out the Riot Squad. And outside but then eventually succumb hmm. to ruby was really good and i was like this is why i like sasha banks and next up this though, that might be the biggest win ruby has had on the main roster yeah, it, could it might be. I mean, it, might, it might be her only win but it certainly was the biggest one she's had i think she's probably beaten she's Charlotte probably she's... in the hundreds of matches they've had singles yeah you reckon she beat charlotte in a singles I match i think i think that set up a match for uh yeah because of a lot of Distractions. I swear that was oh, the set up their fast lane match. Oh, it might have been. I don't know. I don't I can't I remember. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, it's, yeah, don't get angry with us. <laughs> Alexa Bliss next. In the second, a moment of bliss. She bravely <laughs> shared uh, uh, an example of bullying from Nia Jax with us. Mm. This was great. Yes. So Alexa tells the story about how this one time she and Nia, who, 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 who she thought was her best friend, they went to Walt Disney World. And Nia's Walt Disney World. What I what did I say? What I, just, I thought it was just Disney, Disney World. All oh, right, okay. Well, you know, Walt Disney. World. Walt Disney World. Yeah, it's the it's the spin off. Um, it was the it was the original one. It's the uh, more. <laughs> and, oh, the, the, the no, bit. Alleged, <laughs> alleged, alleged, alleged. You ever go at me for doing things like that? Alleged. Um, but she went. They went to Disney World, and Naya just spent the whole time making fun of Alexa's height, and, and she was asking all of the attendants if not, if Alexa was tall enough to go on the ride. Even the teacups. And they're just teacups. As Alexa says, you just have to sit down on them. And Alexa's close to tears. And then my favourite moment of this, she's like, then they went to dinner, and she, Anaya made the waiter give Alexa the kids' menu, and then she laughed with two turkey legs in her hands. <laughs> The, the, the last line was, Naya turned the happiest place on earth into the, the saddest, saddest place ever. The saddest day ever. Oh, this was so funny. Yeah, it's it really was, good. It was the image of Naya laughing at her with two turkey legs in her hands. <laughs> that, that was great. That was great. So the funny. delivery of oh, the cup it's line. so great. It's a cup. You just sit in a cup. <laughs> was Was superb. It's so awesome. This, uh, is, this is great. Then we get the, then to not awesome. We got Titus <laughs> Weld's slide. Uh, this has been built up oh, that's throughout clever. the show. That's very clever. Mm. Are you the first person to come up with that yes. one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm the first person. <laughs> uh, they they built this up throughout the night. <laughs> or oh, we're gonna have an interview with Titus Worldwide <laughs> about that time he tripped over on that glorified house. Show. <laughs> it's hilarious. And it was funny. It was. You're funny. making me I not know, like I it. I know. I said this in my news today. Something naturally funny happened in WWE, and the crowd reacted to it, and social media have reacted to it, and we all thought it was funny. I I laughed. I laughed a lot. I laughed so much that I got my wife, and I was like, 
oh, what, what, this is pretty funny. And she thought it was funny too. And then WWE have just done their best to drive it into the ground. As I mean, it didn't take them long. Three days it took them to just drive this into the ground. That they are uncool parents. Yes. Who just want to quote your favourite lines back at you over and over again, not quite understanding why it's funny in the first place. They are like season seven Marge Simpson. Sure. Uh, so Rene Young interviews Titus backstage about this falling over bit. Titus says, well, you know, uh, it's it's the getting back up that counts. Well, yeah, I, I, I did like that because they showed the clips of it again. You can actually hear the director calling them back in because they wanted to have their mics on with them laughing at the footage. And Titus says that, like, you know, he tried to cover for it, but then just went, nope, I just fell over. Yeah. And that and, was nice. And then it's all about the getting up. And then Baron, Cor- Baron Corbin walks in. He makes some sort of point and then walks away. Well, he, no, he ca- Baron Corbin comes in and says, you know what would be more inspirational? Not falling over. Not falling over. And I was like, that's, that's like a really funny bad line. Because if, if you've got someone who has charisma and presence to deliver if that If the line, Iconics had said that, that line. That would be... And if they, like, giggled at each other afterwards, or yeah. if it was Chris Jericho and he had, you know, those perfect comedic pauses, you know what would be more inspirational? If if you didn't fall over. Perfect. Like, that's a, that's funny, but Baron Corbin just came out. He's, and I like Baron Corbin, <laughs> but good grief, he was flat on this show. It, and there was... That's why I've just written here. He makes some sort of point, because I wasn't sure what point he had made. Yeah. When you said the words there, I was like, oh, I get it now. But it it did not come did, across. Yeah, yeah, I I mean, I guess that's what they were trying to do. I was and, also then thoroughly distracted by Corey's hair, which mm. is massive. And then Titus says, "It's okay, it's okay, Rene, I'm fine." Like that was, it's absolute bollocks. <laughs> also, we're not allowed to say that word. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. not. It's just bad. I bad got, stuff. I got for it. Uh, Matt Hardy was next backstage with his blue backdrop, and it was very bright because they're playing with the darkness and light. I, uh, imagery and he says we've been he's sort of reading the book and says we me and Matt have been me and Matt me and Bray me and Bray well, me Matt and Bray <laughs> there's, there's so many celestial bodies uh, we've been present together throughout time and then they do this sort of photoshopped montage oh I, I there was a bit of pang of worry came over me when they started doing like crazy camera effects and then started doing this and I was like oh no mm. This is not good at all. And then I suddenly thought, oh no, I'm going to have to go on Wrestle Ramble and say that I didn't like something that Woken Matt Hardy did, which means I'm just going to get a load of nonsense said back to me. It's not nonsense, not nonsense, your opinions are nonsense. I don't mean that. A lot of people are saying that I was wrong. But I thought this was hilariously unfunny and just made them seem less cool. Yeah, I'll back you up here. This wasn't this wasn't good. So it has like a, a picture of them photoshopped on a boat and then uh, in the background for that famous sailor kiss, they were in the reflection of the, the moon Apollo landing. 11 moon landing. And it was I don't know whether it was the music that was playing underneath it or if the images were wrong, but it just wasn't funny. It was really bad. Mm. Really? It wasn't really bad. It was just it was just not funny. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I did, uh, and it's a shame because... Well, it, I, I, the only reason I say it made... I, thought it was really bad is because it made me like them less mm. and i'm not massively high on them at the moment anyway and i'm i'm trying to like them but this makes me like them less yeah and in terms of that then it's it's a negative segment it's just i don't get why they're not treating this gimmick as bray is like the intrigue here is bray being a woken character for me i think that's really interesting and i want to see that but they're not they're telling the story of lightness and darkness and Bray and Matt coming together the leader of worlds because when Bray comes in all the backdrop turns dark and they do his kind of stuff but as we said last week Matt won the feud Bray should have to succumb to the Woken stuff uh, it should all be Woken themed for me and and the Wyatt gimmick needs to go away completely so people can miss it and it can come back so I, I was going to say because when, when Bray turns on Matt hmm. and we just have that feud again it's, it'll feel like nothing has changed. It's, n- it's not... This wasn't good, and they're tag champs, so a bit rubbish. Yeah. Then we got the six-man tag of Jinder, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, losing to Bobby, Braun, and Roman. <laughs> My first note just reads, Roman, like a dick, tells Braun to get out because he's got this. Mm. And then the heels brilliantly tag each other in, yeah. and Sami Zayn's like squaring up for ages. Then he tags in Kevin Owens. Yep. Kevin Owens tags in Sami Zayn to more and more cheers. Yeah. The more they did it, the more crowd, the crowd were into it. I, I don't get like WWE should know <laughs> this is a babyface funny thing to do. 
I don't know. No. I don't know. Uh, but that was pop in the crowd. Uh, and, yeah, the reactions to Bobby Lashley again were, were well, that, pretty yeah, flat. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I mean, Lashley, so Roman was beaten down for a long time, and then he tagged Lashley, and tagged, Lashley was tagged into just utter silence. Mm. Um, and the only thing that really got a pop was Sammy teasing hitting the delayed suplex on onto Lashley. Um and then Lashley attempted to do the uh, delay suplex, and, and Owens broke it up. And Owens tagged into a huge ovation. That was like the, the crowd just popped back up again. Um, <laughs> I'm just written here. WWE commentary is a huge issue, and I'm not sure why I've written that. Maybe it was just something I just thought at the time, but it really is a huge issue. Yeah, yeah. I think we can agree on that. <laughs> Although I did laugh. So Coach has got this gimmick where he's got a new word every hour. Mm. <laughs> it's just like, gentlemen. The time has ticked over, so I have a new word for this hour. And when the more he does it, the more Michael Cole goes like, and groans. But his new word for hour three was frustrated. And then during this match, and Cole says like, uh, oh, I think um, uh, Owens didn't get the pin there. He looks really annoyed. And Cole goes, you could say he's frustrated. And I did chuckle at that. Mm, yeah. But... <laughs> Corey's hair is also so big because it's full of secrets, apparently. I, I think we it's WWE commentary is an issue. Let's just leave it at that. It's a, it's a definite issue. So is. Roman was worked over for ages to build up to Braun's hot tag. And then Braun had a great hot tag. He's your guy. Yeah. I've written in caps. It's, it's a really smart way to book him in recent weeks after the, the, the 10-year-old tag team title win. And, and that is as these hot tags. He doesn't have to be exposed in long matches. So the best way to use Braun at the moment is in those squash matches or in a hot tag tag capacity for the ends of tag matches. And then you can build to the big singles matches at pay-per-views. It's a, the WWE are doing many, many things wrong on Raw, but Braun Strowman, they're doing terrifically well. Braun did his um, charge thing on the outside. He knocked over Owens, then he went and knocked over Zayn. Yes. And then he went back to knock over Owens again, but Owens sidestepped him and went... Phew! And it, it was great. But then he just threw him into the barrier. Yeah, it was great. Uh, and then Braun beat Owens with a power slam. Yeah. Uh, could, should have been Jinder. Oh, that was well, pinned. Yeah. yeah. Does, does Jinder have a match at Backlash? He is facing. Oh, no. I don't know. No, I don't think he does. I don't yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. So, fun oh, but pointless stuff. I, I've also written my notes here. Remember Chad Gable won last week? He would have been super over in Montreal. Yeah. Uh, then Baron Corbin, off the back of that really hot Titus Worldwide segment earlier, got a match against No Way Jose, which was kind of set up the previous week when he attacked Jose from behind. Uh, Baron comes out trying to get booed with yeah. a promo. Well, and this is, again, WWE's problem with scripting out their promos, including pauses for when the crowd reacts. Because he talks, like, he's literally going like, oh, you're all just sitting there booing me. But they're not. Like, no one's reacting to him at all. Yeah. But he's acting like they are booing him. And it just makes him look like a complete doofus. Especially because this was honestly the quietest moment of the night so far. Yeah. Because they've been so loud for everything else. The one line where it's like, oh, you stop booing me, stop making so much noise, let me speak, is the one <laughs> night, the one bit in the night where it's quietest. Oh, it was really, really bad. Jose comes out f with his weird conga line thing that yeah. I hate and then Titus so join the match they're having a match uh, Titus Worldwide comes you out you their weird sex party yeah they just I don't know <laughs> what's the only way they can all be partying like this is they're, they're all on a lot of drugs and they just go back and have orgies mm. otherwise they're adults why would they <laughs> why would they do this they could be students nonstop? they could be students and students love to dress up like knobheads and act like complete dicks mm. could be them could be yeah. Uh, so then Titus Worldwide come down and Dana Brooke and Apollo Crews wipe the area where Titus tripped over at first. I really wish, I mean, I know the whole joke about this is we're worried that Titus is running. I really wish Dana Brooke would stop running in those heels mm. because it looks like she can't. And I, I just, something is going to break. Oh, she's she's a competent lady. Trish Stratus did it at WrestleMania X7. But tr when Trish Stratus, ra you mentioned in that, do, do you want people to pledge on Patreon or something? Maybe. maybe. But when people when Trish like legs it in those heels, I'm like, yeah, she's comfortable and she mm. can definitely run in those. When like Dana Brooke is taking like Bambi on ice steps because she could just topple over each way in the other, and it's it's terrifying. Well, anyway, Titus comes down and he gets the bit. They wipe it down for him and he steps over very calmly. It was fine, but, and, and it would have been funny, but I, I, I was kind of over it by this point. 
and then he gets onto the the ring apron and takes a bump off the apron while he was try- while he was trying to get into the <clears throat> yeah. ring yeah and that distracted baron corbin jose got the roll up win it was actually all a ploy titus just fell over because that's his gimmick now he d- he did it on purpose to cost corbin the victory and it was like that's good that's good and it was kind of funny but i just i, I felt like it had already passed for me well when they did this my worry is um, so I'm, I, I can't remember the exact timeline of this, but I'm going to say eight years ago or so, eight or nine years ago, our truth once cut a promo where he got the town name wrong, and to this day that is still his gimmick that he is clueless and doesn't know where he is or what is going on. I just don't want to be sitting here eight years from now. I mean, I want to be sitting here eight years from now because I like this job, but I don't want to be sitting here eight years from now talking about Titus still falling over I think he might be because it's not like he's got a lot else going on no the Titus Worldwide thing hasn't exactly been the most successful gimmick in the world so Mickey James even with Dana Brooke versus Natalia next and uh, this is where we thought Natalia got a huge pop because she's Canadian but it's actually because she's got a Ronda Rousey Mm -hmm. and yeah they uh, they had an okay match I would have Mickey, they weren't really put in a position to have a good match. It was like three minutes and then it was a distraction. Not Yeah, distraction roll-up, I would say. I Alexa c- Bliss got on the apron yeah. and uh, Natalia Natali went to chase her off. Ronda Rousey chased Alexa off. Mickey James was looking at Alexa and then Natalia rolled her up. Basically the same finish as the previous match. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, so Ronda Rousey looked mean, but it did feel a bit like Ronda was wasted here totally absolutely mm. and then um so alexa bliss is then on the apron and then nia Jax comes out not with her championship belt and not and alexa bliss runs away but this time she runs into the crowd and then nia gets into the ring and you think oh there's going to be a moment here between nia and ronda and natalia there's going to be something here but then nia just smiles and they raise each other's arms and they all cheer yeah yeah so i didn't like it uh but i can see i got I'm I'm not really angry about this because I think on paper it works because you have Nia come out and they do do uh, a few seconds of tense stare down. Like, it's just like a glance. Mm. And this is the first time they've interacted. So that's perfectly fine to just start off small and build from there. But the... I wouldn't have then had Nia smile big and raise both ladies' arms especially with the Seth Rollins and Finn Balor stuff earlier. I was just sick of baby faces all liking each other. I would have, you know what? No, I would have preferred like a proper Nia Jax stare down of Ronda. Natalia maybe pushes them both away mm. friendly. And that's, that's your, that would have been a lot more dramatically intriguing. Mm-hmm. Agreed. So then uh, you didn't see this, but uh, Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler got one of the more homosexual promos <laughs> in recent times. Did they really? Yeah, so they're both in... Uh, it has Drew and Dolph or whatever it has on the screen. I already hate those placards. And then it cuts to them both in a, a hotel room, I guess. Drew is topless. Uh, Dolph is just wearing his sort of jacket thing and he's topless underneath that. They're looking up at the camera there. And they, they cut a promo about how they're here to to take raw on now but i just couldn't just couldn't stop looking at the <laughs> fact that they were topless in the hotel room together mm. just thought it was a bit it's a bit funny especially because if you consider like when they they were setting up to record this and they were just like should we call that promo and i was like oh no i didn't take my top off yeah. first and then Dove was like oh, if you're taking yours off i better take mine off too but we can't both be topless so if i put my jacket on will that look will that mm. look weird no no i should be all right mate it was it was an okay promo but Drew's promo the previous week was so good that and in front of a live crowd and this was just to a camera just kind of saying the same points again. It would have been better not to have it, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. overall. But the main event was an absolute corker. This by was great. Far the best thing on the show. One hundred percent. Seth Rollins beating Finn Balor to retain his Intercontinental title. Man, like this was just, it was so quick and slick and again, these are your guys. Like it's there's so there's so more over than 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 Roman Reigns and like they're just 
they can have these these main event quality matches that are just outstanding. Like mm. I thought this was really really great stuff, and it was because Balor's promo earlier in the night was all about like you and I have had four singles matches. I've won two, and you've won two. So let's have the match now to decide who is the better of them. And they had a very very competitive match. I've seen a lot of people uh, on Twitter this morning like they messaged me saying like oh I thought this really hurt Finn. And um, I, I don't think it hurt Finn really because they had a very competitive match. Finn at any point looks like he looked like he could have won the match. He had some really good near falls off of it, and it was all built around previous spots from previous matches. It was it was the perfect final match of a five match series. Yeah, that well, I, if that is the final match, I'm hoping it will go on a bit longer. But yeah, just the way they because if you take all five matches as one big chunk. That there is a story of moves told through each one. You know, how how many times have we seen them riff off the basic spot from Seth Rollins of the superplex into the Falcon Arrow? Yeah. We've seen that get hit in, like, the first match. In the second match, Finn Balor got a roll-up victory off of the superplex rather than the Falcon Arrow. And here... It was Finn Balor who managed to power Rollins up after the superplex, despite being just hit by a superplex yeah. and hit the Falcon Arrow on Rollins. Uh, really, so, really good. Oh, and the crowd it. popped huge because I suppose they're a more wrestling fan crowd uh, than the more mainstream crowds of usual. And there was another really good spot where, because these two men know each other so well, Rollins was able to block Finn's kick when he was up on the turnbuckle. It looked like it hit him first, but, you know, he did have the, the arm up. It's really nicely structured really match, good stuff. playing I, off stuff from before. Yeah, big, big fan of this. This is awesome. But the the interesting bit... Oh, the, but back to that point about Balor being hurt. Like, what is Balor before this match? Mm. So, like, what is there to hurt, really? He's, he's pretty flattened out by WWE booking. So him winning this match would be too much. Like, that would <laughs> hurt Rollins, you know? So... He de- Balor is definitely better after this match than he was before. And mm-hmm. that's all you can ask for sometimes. Is he on the backlash card? I don't know. I think he might come out and cost Rollins a title. I just I got the sense this is what I was going to come on to and it was what my Raw review was about. Uh, I with, with the previous segment of Finn attacking Rollins at the end and just the way Finn was trash talking Seth and giving him quite brutal chops mm. and stuff. And there were a few times where he wrote, there was a great sequence near the end where Finn kept on getting roll-ups. I thought he was going to go for the tights mm. and get a win. And that wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world, I thought. Uh, but I just, I really did feel like this was a heel thing for Finn. Not not a totally heel thing, but there were definitely elements there that could be built on. If they are going to do it, that's not a backlash. Because I think that Miz is not winning the title at Backlash. Because Miz, Miz is now on SmackDown. It'll be too awkward. It'll be too awkward. So I think that Rollins will likely retain. But it is something you could do post that. And that match, this match here is a good sort of starting off point for yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, so like a post-match beatdown mm-hmm. angle. Yeah. Uh, and I, I read because Raw is short on top heels, top heels and top baby. Fa- it just feels like it's short on everything, to be honest. And to Apart refreshen up. Uh, hmm? Apart from Braun. It's very, it's very, yeah, yeah. it's got a lot of Braun. And and to to switch Finn would be the it would it would catapult him up. It'd be like a a rejuvenation of his character, just like we've seen with Nakamura on SmackDown. But yes, overall a uh, a, a great match to end with. But overall, like just a, a forgettable show for me. Uh, which you know, it's backlash. I was going to say, well. yeah, it's quite easy to to forget that this was a go home show for mm. a pay per view that is happening this weekend. I genuinely forgot that backlash was this weekend. In fact, you and I yesterday, when we were making our plans for next Monday, because it's a bank holiday here in the UK, um, I was just going to do uh, the news episodes on my own until I was, the camera was like, "Oh no, wait, we can't because it's backlash, and we've both got to be here." Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Damn backlash. Damn backlash. It's always backlash. It's always, it's always backlash. backlash. The one time it is, we bloody forget it. Bloody forget bloody it. Bloody forget it. So but what would you I, give it out of five? I, I mean, I thought it was just like a really like below average show. But so I, poor? Well, no, but I really like the main events, which sort of elevated it it's for a me. hour show, though. Yeah, I know, but I really, really like that main event. And, you know, I, I thought the crowd reactions to Sammy and Kevin were, were fun as well. The crowd were great throughout. And I surprisingly enjoyed the Sasha uh, Ruby Riot match. Um, was, there, was there anything else I liked in this show? Nothing else, probably about it. Slim but picking. It's slim picking. So maybe it was a low average. Cool. Yeah, well, I, I went for poor, but a pretty solid poor. 
Uh, that's all we've got time for today, though. So please click the videos that have just appeared on our laps to catch up with the latest Wrestle Talk videos. And of course, subscribe to this channel and the podcast version wherever you get your podcasts from. I've been Ollie Davis. This has been Luke Owen. And that was Rambling.